Here's a shot of the inside of the Autoprom. Uh, you can see what makes up the interior. And you'll notice here there are a couple of other features. Uh, one is a set of jumpers. The top one, where you can move it between GM at the left or Honda to the right, most folks don't worry about. They don't use these with Hondas, but if they were, it would be possible. The other one is a 24 or 28 pin jumper, and this is if you happen to want to emulate a 24 pin device, such as the early throttle body pickups, the early throttle body Camaro Firebirds, you could move this jumper over to the left where you would have a 24 pin mode. Primarily, you're going to be moving it over to the right to the 28 pin mode. If you use a 24 to 28 pin adapter, such as the G2 adapter, you would also want to have that jumper over in the 28 pin mode since you'll be going into the adapter with the emulation. Here we're going to talk about the orientation of chips and the positioning of chips within the chip programmer and reader. Notice the chip socket is 32 pins. Here we have three different chips that can be used here. One is a 2732A, which is a 24 pin. The other is a 27SF512, which is 28 pin. And this is a 29F040, which is 32 pin. In the case of the 24 pin, the notch would face up toward the handle the chip would be positioned away from the handle, bottom justified in the socket. You'll be able to read this chip, you'll not be able to reprogram it though. The next chip is 28 pin chip, again positioned with the notch facing toward the handle, the chip position justified away from the handle. You'll be able to read and write this chip. This 32 pin chip, that fills up all the holes Again, the notch facing up toward the handle. This 29F040 you'll be able to read and write. Some more comments about the switches. Some folks become confused about the switch positions. Again, there are two switches on the back of the Autoprom. The one closest to the connectors here is for 10K mode and that's strictly to set the data logging mode for the early GM OBD1 vehicles. 86 through 89. 86 through 89 are the applicable years. If you set the switch inboard, that will apply a 10K resistance across the data pin and ground, which is needed to initiate communications. If you set it to the right, it will set that as an open setup, and there is no resistance applied in that case. So this is strictly that 10K resistor. It's on or off. The outer switch is something that's a little more important and can also be a source of confusion. When this switch is inboard, this device will behave as an autoprom, and therefore you will need to set the software to look for this as an autoprom. The only way you're going to be able to do chip burning emulation is to have it in the autoprom mode. The only software that you can use for data logging when it's in the autoprom mode is Tuner Pro RT. If you wanted to use a different software for data logging such as WinALDL or TTS Data Master you would then take this switch and push it to the outside. At that point this just becomes a dumb terminal so to speak. It will be just a data logging pass through cable. We want to talk briefly about the installation of the emulation header coming from the Autoprom or Ostrich into the G1 adapter. The red notch, or the red stripe on the ribbon cable here, represents pin number one. This should be oriented in the same direction as the notch on the chip. In the case of the G1 here, the GP1, you notice the original orientation of the notch on the chip and the orientation that we want for the red stripe that's the correct orientation for the G1 with the Autoprom or Ostrich emulation cable. Now we can also look at the G2 for the throttle body applications and in this case you'll note that the orientation is the opposite. You want it with the red stripe again facing the same direction as a chip would normally go but for the G2 this ends up being 
in toward the middle, away from the notch at the edge. All right, here we have a small uh, netbook with a G1 adapter, a MemCal for a 730, 1227730 ECU, a ZIF socket, a chip, Autoprom emulation cable. That's all you need. That's everything you need. So we're ready to install this in vehicle. We're going to get it up and running. We should have it running in about 30 seconds. All right, this is a 87 Firebird, but it's got a 90 to 92 tune port set up with a 1227730. It's a speed density setup. We've got our G1 adapter here. We're going to go ahead and snap the ZIF socket in so it makes it easy to swap chips and insert the emulation header. We've already installed the MemCal on the edge so that you have the knock board and all of that. Note the notation on the direction of the chip, orientation toward the notch. That's the same thing that we're going to be putting in here. All right, so this is a chip I already have pre-programmed, and we're going to go ahead and put this in. And the way you do this, you just roll it up in here, make sure it's lined up. See where this lines up right there? Make sure it lines up. Snap it down in there. You see it's all snapped in. Everything's fine. All right. Now we're going to pull the chip out. We're going to be running emulation. Hook up the emulation header. See the red stripe that goes where the notch of the chip would go out. Again, remembering that when you're in the G1 adapter, the orientation of the notch and the red stripe is away from the handle. That's opposite from when you're programming it in the Autoprom and the chip programmer. Remember that. Now we're latched in. We're ready to hook up the Autoprom. We've got the data cable. It's going to go over to the data port, right over here. Alright, so ALDL is hooked up. Got our switches. Toward the inside, we're going to be running in autoprom mode. We don't need the 10K because this is a 730. We're turning it off. We're not using our ALD or A to D's but we could if we wanted to. Pull our retraction out. And we're going to go ahead and hook up to the laptop. All right, we've already installed the USB drivers. Is you should install USB drivers before you connect to this. We're going to get opened up into the software here. We have the software detect the auto prompt. And now we need to set up the XDF. And we need to set up the binary. And we'll go through that here in a minute and give you the details on that. 